This project, Catchment Sensitive Farming, was set up in 2006 as a response that the government wanted to make to what's called the Water Framework Directive. And up to a point, it requires us to improve our land management in order to improve that water quality. So each of these stages in the process of improvement of water quality will link to people taking up measures such as this sediment trap and looking at other solutions to what they do or improvements to what they do in order that we achieve these targets both for what's called good ecological status and good chemical status in our water as well as meeting targets for drinking water, bathing water, shellfish and so on. Good water comes from our farmland. That's the main source of, of the water we drink and the food we eat and thereby given that 76% of the land in this country is farmed we have to work with farmers in order to achieve that better water quality. Diffuse pollution from agriculture is inadvertent losses from farmland. All our inputs, apart from seed, are soluble in water in terms of fertilizers, nutrients for crops, and also um, the likes of pesticides. So we also have got sediment that we create as a result of moving soil in order to create a tilth in which the crops grow. And when we have livestock, we have also additional risks and issues relating to manures, and that can include faecal indicator organisms. The risks vary according to the site and according to the farming type and the sector type of the farm. So with this project, what we're trying to do is address individual issues at an individual farm and field level. It's not a question of following a recipe. We have got some common um, measures that we would recommend. There are no less than 116 of those common ones and then we can tailor others to the individual situation. So there are solutions to these issues and that's what this is about. It's not just saying to people we've got a problem, we've got a risk. This project aims to reduce the problem, to solve the problem if possible. Um, it always is a question of reducing the risk rather than necessarily taking it out entirely. We will always have extreme weather events, we will always have um, odd situations which occur from time to time. So at the end of the day what we're trying to do is actually make it work for both the individual farm and for that individual location. The whole idea of the SUDS project when we first got involved with it was to have things that were pretty simple to do and uh, didn't cost a lot of money and were therefore fairly easy to do. Uh, the original project was just to try and get some things in, almost back of an envelope type stuff, just to get some things in place, often with things that were lying around on the farm, things that you didn't specifically have to go out and buy. Uh, get them in place, put in some really basic monitoring. So the whole thing was done on a fairly small budget and the idea was just to see if they did make any difference as to whether it was worth looking into them further. We looked at some uh, ways of trying to capture some of the sediment that comes down the ditches. I mean, obviously all our uh, fields here, are, uh, well, in this area, are all the arable fields. Uh, most of them have got land drains in. So we were looking to see if we could capture sediment within the ditch itself. And the other area was looking at whether we could do anything to arrest runoff. Obviously, we're not talking about big slopes in our, in our area, on our farm. Um, we're not talking about very high rainfall, particularly not this year. But nevertheless, we still do seem to get extremes and occasionally we'll get a very wet day or two days. And even on, on these very modest, modest slopes, we do get runoff. And we've got a vulnerable area here that leads off down towards um, a triple SI area and ultimately does find its way back into graphene water, which is obviously a drinking water supply. So we just wondered if there were some of these simple things that we could put into place to uh, protect the water courses from that risk of runoff from um, heavy rainfall events. Um, so sediment in the ditch, but over here a bunded area just to try and stop the uh, sediment ending up in the, in the ditch in the first place these little sort of deepening of the ditches with these uh, silt traps uh, we've placed them for the monitoring we placed some trays in the bottom on the slabs to capture the sediment that came down the ditch and this has been in a year so that sort of what probably two inches ish of sediment that's in that tray is basically accumulated within the ditch in a year even with our very low rainfall 
Uh, so that was the sort of monitoring that we were doing, very, very rough stuff. Um, something that else that came to light when I was looking in the earlier days when there was very little sediment in there, looking to see how much, we also found in there quite a lot of things swimming in that water. And uh, you can actually reference those to act as broad indicators of the water quality. Uh, so you can get little uh, uh, identification booklets breaking them down into sort of like red ones that indicate really even if the water is really quite bad, others that will survive if the water is in a reasonable state, and others which really only you will find if the water is, is in very good uh, condition. So it's a good way of trying to get a broad idea when we were talking about the monitoring, a good idea of trying to get a broad um, idea of how good the water is. But I think just the visual amount of sediment in this really tiny ditch with these tiny slopes and our tiny rainfall is um shows that i think yeah they do work yeah